what's going on guys Vic VP back one of the game case arcades video on this one today we're gonna be looking at the official ultimate gaming console 2021 version So yes, new year, new additions, new builds, new add-ons, new everything. The Ultimate Gaming Console 2021. So if you guys haven't watched Robbie's build, Robbie is the first ever customer to receive an Ultimate Gaming Console. Definitely watch his videos because I do have a little bit of a backstory behind the Ultimate Gaming Console. Long story short, I had an idea of a all-in-one PC that was pretty portable. Basically, you could plug it into any display. I'm in my living room. This is my 120 inch projector. Uh, you plug into whatever display and you game on. So basically one day I did get an email from Robbie. He had the same exact idea that I had. His build is very unique. He's got a couple of specific things that he wanted. Main thing was the PlayStation controllers and the PC desktop case. Basically with his build, I was able to really research, experiment and experience what is exactly needed inside of the ultimate console so the main objective for the ultimate gaming console was to be as compact as possible i mean my original idea was to basically have like a xbox series x size pc or a playstation 5 size pc but basically experimenting and testing it physically is impossible especially when you're looking at 40 terabytes getting a mini itx build with you know three to four hard drives is physically impossible so this right here is probably the most compact that I could I can make a 40 terabyte PC out of. So now again, there are other people on YouTube that make kind of builds like this. I'm not going to drop names, but there are basically people that message me and they go, Hey Vic, have you seen this guy? I want this guy's build. Again, the main idea for the Ultimate Gaming Console was to make it as compact as possible. I wanted to mimic a Xbox Series X. Like I wanted to take that size. Linus Tech Tips has an actual PC that they built the size of an Xbox Series X, which I wanted to do, but again, 40 terabytes is physically impossible. There is a couple of people on YouTube that basically have these mini ITX builds, so it's mini PC builds, but then they have a USB going to like a four drive bay add-on. I think that's kind of silly. You're bottlenecking number one. It's just so much data going through one USB port. I, I'm not a fan of that, um, but I think that's silly. I would rather somebody just get this, just get the one complete PC instead of you having three plugs in the wall and it's just a headache. So again, people that message me and say, hey Vic, can you do this guy's build? I wouldn't do it. You know, again, it's basically a mini ITX PC and then add it on with the four terabyte bay. It looks silly, like it's literally like a, like a, like a I don't know, a USB add-on. It's like a box and then you put four drive bays in it. I think it's silly. Uh, so again, this is my own personal one. This is probably the most compact I could possibly make it. So the biggest thing whenever I make any build, whether it's an arcade build, ultimate console build, whatever type of build, I always try to find the most cost-effective way to get these builds down. I do get a lot of emails. I do get a lot of comments on YouTube and on Instagram and everything. Hey Vic, I want one. How much? How much is this? How much is that? Whoa, it's too expensive. How can we get the price lower? Biggest thing you have to understand is that when you are lowering the price, that means you're going with cheaper components. You are sacrificing a couple of things such as speed, you know, hard disk drives compared to SSDs and such. So just keep that in mind. This specific PC build is my personal build. I built this basically as a test bench. Um, basically, I'm trying to get a budget beast ultimate gaming console um, because I did realize that there's a couple of ways to save. Biggest thing really are the hard drives. But at the end of this video, I'll do a whole unboxing. I'm gonna do a whole thing of how much was each part and basically telling you what we're sacrificing out of it. So this one really is my own personal build. This literally sits here. Uh, this again is my 120 inch projector. This is my main living room. You know, we just watched the New Year's ball drop on this screen. So basically this sits right here. Me and my wife play it all the time. We were playing some two player games. We were playing Streets of Rage 4 uh, with her sister uh, on Christmas. So again, we got four players to eight players. New Year's Jackbox. If you guys don't know Jackbox games, it's an online game that you play like on your phone and like eight to 12 people could play it. It's pretty fun. So New Year's, this was a big hit. Again, basically just had it broadcasted to the screen. So again, this is my own personal build. Eventually it will be sold but there's gonna be a couple of major things that I'm doing with this. Again, number one, testing out 
components and hardware such as the new PC case and the hard drives. But the real other big thing that I am testing with this build is I'm gonna be making the jump to big box. I will still do hyperspin builds. From my understanding, big box, hyperspin, it's not an easy kind of segue. It's supposed to be very user friendly on the user end if you guys wanted to add more systems or something like that. Um, but I will be using this to basically make a big box launch box image. Um, that's something though, again, I'm gonna be playing a lot with. I still have my hyperspin stuff. Um, from my understanding, I could set Big Box to read Rocket Launcher, which is not really the point of Big Box because it's supposed to be making it user friendly and easier to use. But again, this build will basically build a. But again, this build will basically be a Big Box build. So that's again the main testing to it. I'm testing the hard drives, and we're going to be testing Big Box on this. But again, so far, I've literally had this here. I, at night, I'm playing Mafia like. During the holiday break, I've actually started to game a little bit because I wanted to play some games. Mafia Definitive Edition. Cyberpunk is just kind of a nightmare right now. Um, so I've been trying to get that running. You know, it's on and off because of these patch updates. But right now I've been, use I've been really enjoying Mafia. Um, but the biggest thing I did want to do with this was again to just be able to sit back because we have a baby girl on the way. So when the baby does come, I could at least sit back, take care of her, and play. Again, if you guys don't understand the concept of the Ultimate Gaming Console, again, it has every system, the main systems. You can take a look at my Hyperspin Drive video, no junk systems. Um, really, when she comes, I am aiming to play like a lot of the classic games that I never played before. Uh, PlayStation 2, I've never played Kingdom Hearts. So I remember growing up, that was like the biggest thing. Um, Bully. Um, uh, Warriors, like, you know, Rockstar Games stuff. That's the main idea. That's really why I built this. Again, it will be my own personal build. When I first put this thing together, the first thing, again, you're gonna see later on, we're gonna talk about the hard drives. Um, I ran a PlayStation 3 emulator and I played some Tony Hawk. I was a big Tony Hawk fan growing up. Still am, I have to get the new Tony Hawk, you know, remaster. But I was playing Tony Hawk Project 8 on the PS3 um, emulator. And it ran pretty good. I was pretty excited because, again, the big thing was to test out this hard drive. I'm basically, you know, going to stop talking. We're going to go look at that video soon. But again, the ultimate gaming console, uh, while it's here because it's nice on at the end of this video, you won't really see it because I'll just have the boxes. So again, at the end of this video, we'll do a whole unboxing of all the parts that are in this. But while we're here, we might as well take a quick look at the PC. Biggest thing again though is the case. I could get this case in white like you see here because my console, my whole entertainment console is white. I went with a white case. I could also get it in black too. But the big thing is that it does have six fans included. It's a really great case. The RGB fans, it's, it's really cool. I'm right now still working on the MSI motherboard to get the color of the fans, the RGB fans to work with the motherboard. But it does also come with this cool remote. It could do like a whole sound activated mode. So while I game at night, I leave it on this mode where it kind of like spins and stuff whenever there's noise going on. It's not that sensitive. I'm right next to the microphone, that's why it's bouncing right now. But while I'm playing, you know, anytime bass hits, it's a pretty cool light show. Um, so again, as far as the actual case itself, you have the RGB fans. Um, again, this is the most compact case I could get, especially when we're looking at at least three to four hard drives. This PC case, I believe, can hold up to seven seven hard drives you could do four um standard hard drives i forgot the measurements and it also on the back wall could hold four ssds um not including your m.2 stuff so this case right here especially if you're looking at 40 terabytes this right here is like the most compact that i could find um i did find another one on amazon that had dual-sided glass panes but from my experience especially with wiring this Wiring, I do try to keep it neat, but I'll be honest, this side here, the sidewall, there's no, there's no glass on it. All the wire is here. There's no way to hide all these wires. So this right here is probably the most greatest looking. In all honesty, right now, there's a lot of posts on like TikTok and Instagram of like people with these type of cases. And the cool thing with this one-sided window is that it has a ledge here. People are putting like Funko Pops. You know, they're making it cool. They're making it awesome. The only little downside to this case, specifically in my situation, is that I have this here on the entertainment side and this glass panel is not reversible. So basically this panel is covered with the entertainment console. But other than that, it is a really great case. I'm really loving it. 
a lot of people do notice it. Like once I turn it on, yesterday we're doing New Year's Eve and everybody's like, whoa, like what is that? So it's really cool. It's definitely an eye-catching piece. RGB will do that, obviously. As far as the PC case, again, I have it up here just to kind of show you for the video. I really have it down next to my um, IKEA console. A lot of people did notice on Robbie's build, the, build, the actual tower looked huge. Not huge in a bad way, it looked big. But that was because of the handles. This doesn't have handles on it. At the Basically right now, I'll, I'll put it down to show you the real way that this really sits. It's really good looking. It actually blends in with the furniture very well. As far as like the PC case, again, it's got six fans. It came with everything. It's even got like three USB 3.0 ports or two. Don't quote me on that. And it's got your whole like 7.1 like hookup right here. Everything is here. Power button is here. USB on top and on the back. Again, as far as the PC case, I'm really surprised that I found this case. And it's awesome. As far as your hard drives in this, again, biggest thing is that I went with an idea that I'm testing out. This is running three 14 terabyte um, easy store uh, Western digital external hard drives. Um, so basically I took an external hard drive and I shuck it. Uh, shucking basically is that it's, it's in a case, you know, an external hard drive. I basically take the hard drive out of the case and I put it in the computer. So we have three 14 terabyte hard drives. And again, at the end of it, I'm gonna tell you the price I paid because of Black Friday sale, I had to jump on it. So we do have three 14 terabyte hard drives. That makes our build, I need to do math real quick. <laughs> that makes our build 42 terabytes. I had to look at the calculator. <laughs> this makes our build 42 terabytes down here and I did one terabyte SSD for the boot and all that. So it's 43 terabytes. Again, though, keep in mind 14 terabytes. Out of the 14 terabytes, and a lot of people don't understand hard drives, um, you don't get 14 terabytes. Uh, these clock in at 12.8 terabytes once it's all formatted and all that for Windows. So you're really looking at 12.8 terabytes times three and the one SSD. Um, MSI motherboard, I always use MSI. I'm a big MSI fanboy. I love MSI. This is the same exact motherboard I did for Eugene's build. He's really the one that started it. And Robbie's build. I will never go with another motherboard. Uh, long story short, on my virtual pinball cabinet, I went with a cheap MSI motherboard that didn't have Wi-Fi. And I'm, I'm talking like a $70 motherboard. It is honestly, it's great for virtual pinball, but now I'm downloading more tables and it's just slow using a USB Wi-Fi dongle. It was, I should have just spent like the extra 30, 40 bucks and got a correct motherboard. So again, MSI motherboard, this is a regular ATX or ITX, I believe it's ATX, I don't know, whatever. Um, it's a regular motherboard, it's not a mini, it's not a micro, um, and that's really all it is. The most biggest thing with this build specifically at this time of shooting is the graphics card. Graphics card right now are just insane. The new RX 3000 series is coming out. Price gouging is ridiculous right now. So. This specific build, I'm actually running an RTX 2060 Super. I got that used. Again, we'll do a whole kind of thing at the end of the video of me explaining it, but this build specifically is running an RTX 2060 Super. I've never done that big of a graphics card for a ultimate gaming console because you don't need it. It's just right now and the price that I got for it, it was a no brainer. This graphics card is better than the one I have in my virtual pinball cabinet which is using 4K display. It's really three monitors and such. So I should really swap it out, but I won't because my virtual pinball cabinet is set. I don't play with it. If it's not broke, don't fix it. So that's really the big deal about the PC itself. You could also see here, again, Black Friday sale. I guess Xbox came out with new controllers because um, these are a little bit different than the ones that I got for Eugene. Um, but I also have four Xbox One controllers. I have the Xbox dongle in the back here. It's got Wi-Fi. The motherboard does have Wi-Fi built in. So even though the MSI motherboard that I have here does have Wi-Fi, I always, any chance I get to be hardwired, Ethernet, direct wire connected, I always do it. Luckily, the way I built the house is with my entertainment system, I do have a direct connection to the Ethernet. So this PC is connected directly to the Internet. But again, with this MSI motherboard, the Wi-Fi on it, the antennas and everything, it's really worth every penny, especially if you're gonna be a Wi-Fi kind of player. So again, that's the PC build. The big thing you can also see real quick is the Xbox One controllers. Again, Black Friday sale. I guess they upgraded for the new Xbox. Um, these controllers are great. 
Uh, I got white and black, great sale on Best Buy. I think it was like $31 each, which is insane, or 35, I have the receipt downstairs. Um, but basically this new controller has like a third button, but they're great. I mean, it's even got like new um, dimples on the triggers and everything, really gives you better grip. So again, this is running four Xbox One controllers. I do have the one single Xbox dongle USB in the back, and obviously a cheap mouse and keyboard. Now what's great about this build is again, I play on the couch. I've so far been playing like CSGO, I've been playing Mafia, uh, Cyberpunk is in and out. Um, what else? We, I just downloaded some new Nicktoons cart game. And again, I've really been playing PlayStation 3 emulation just to test the hard drives. And it's really great. Growing up, I was a big CS player. I was, I was always on Counter-Strike. So I was doing research on getting like, you know, this high-end keyboard and mouse and wireless and I was going to do the lab board and get the wire. I just wound up not doing it because in all honesty, playing Counter-Strike or even Warzone on a 120 inch projector. I mean, I'm not playing competitive, but it, it does the job. It's just, you're better off playing like on a regular size screen. So I didn't go crazy with like a keyboard and mouse. It's easy. It's simple. This is it. The ultimate gaming console. So now real quick, that is the ultimate gaming console. Basically, in my setup, as you can see, I'm on the couch. I was playing some Tony Hawk real quick. So it looks great. It looks like it's part of the furniture, but again, because the glass is not reversible, that's basically where the see-through is, the glass plane is. So it's not too bad. It's definitely great. And like I said, once I game at night, we do have that. It also, again, like I said, comes with a little controller. So if you're not a fan of the RGB on, you could always turn it off. You could turn it on. You could leave it like one solid color if you want. You could have a fade. It goes to the beat of the music and all that. So that's usually how it is set up at my house. Again, you can see on the right side, just a plain white. So as far as customizing, I could always put vinyl sticker on this. You could put logos on this and such. And again, in the back, you do have the Wi-Fi antennas. Again, for the MSI motherboard, I always have ethernet and my HDMI. Xbox dongle, and I always have the keyboard USB in the front. So again, awesome. Basically just now loaded up some PlayStation 3 emulator and uh, I'm in the bush playing this with one hand. I definitely can't play Tony Hawk with one hand, but as you can see, at least you could definitely play. Again, I'm right now just inside of Rocket Launcher. I'm not in a front end just yet, but there's Tony Hawk. So like I said, normally like when I'm on the couch, again, the PC's there. I just grab my regular keyboard and mouse, cheap keyboard and mouse, but it is actually better than like the Logitech as far as distance. And again, right now I'm just using Rocket Launcher. I could go in to PS2 and launch like Bully. I have to still update. I still got Eugene's arcade artwork on it. But uh, basically again, just kind of loading up systems, loading up games. Again, I right now I'm still just playing around and, and basically transferring over files. Uh, 40 terabytes worth of files, is it takes about a week uh, it's not a quick thing. It's not one, two, three. It takes about a week just to transfer the files. Um, but you know, if I come here and let's just say I, like I said, I've been playing Mafia. So I'll come in, just kind of sit on the couch, use the keyboard and mouse to launch until I get the front end working. Uh, and basically the game will launch. So again, right now we are using um, hard disk drives, HDDs regular. The big thing about these 14 terabytes is the speed on these. But again, compared to the price, it does take you know a couple of seconds to load but again i will go in depth and do a lot of testing uh when it comes time but as for right now i'm gaming ultimate gaming console again front end will be complete you really shouldn't need a keyboard and mouse but you still have access to the keyboard and mouse and such so again using xbox controller i could play mafia if i want um i'm gonna quit real quick and again this since this is my personal PC, I do have Steam. I have my own personal Steam account. And like I said, I do play Counter-Strike on the couch. It's kind of unique. It's kind of cool to see. But right now, loading Counter-Strike. Uh, Counter-Strike and Steam, I do have on the SSD. So the boots on this is pretty big deal. Playing this CSGO before the graphics card, I was at 50 frames, 50 FPS, I should say. Um, Whereas now, I believe when I actually get into game, I'm at about 160 frames 
with the RTX 2060 Super. No overclocking as of right now, but again, I am using the keyboard and mouse. Regular one, regular, I'm gonna say it's a cheap one. I get them all the time. Uh, Robbie's build had it, uh, Eugene's build had it. It gets the job done, but basically I'm not using a mouse, I'm not using a mouse pad. Uh, basically again, on the couch and you just game on. So again, ultimate gaming console. Again, this big of a screen, I really don't recommend playing first person shooters. I can't even shoot the bot. <laughs> a little rusty, a little rusty. I still have to download Warzone. Um, I didn't do that just yet. I plan to download that on the actual SSD. Again, Warzone is free, so uh, anybody watching this, you are not gonna get my Counter-Strike or my Steam account. Those are actual real accounts. And I died. <laughs> Again, I always have the keyboard and mouse. It's just much easier to navigate some stuff. Uh, again, I just downloaded this kind of Nickelodeon game to it. Obviously, there's Mortal Kombat. Uh, it's just, again, Mortal Kombat. I'll do it real quick just for you guys to see it. But this MK11 is not on an SSD. So I'll probably put like a quick countdown timer on this uh, just to show you, you know, a game like M uh, Mortal Kombat 11, even Street Fighter 5, um, they always do take a while to load when you're on a regular hard disk drive. If you're on SSD, they always do boot. It's just like, again, for me personally on my setup, I'm not really playing too many fighting games. So I don't mind the weight of this loading. Um, but again, I will be doing an in-depth kind of test. Um, surprisingly, I was able to play Tony Hawk on the PlayStation 3. Um, I can't tell if it's the graphics card that helped me boost and play that, but I do have a couple of games that I definitely want to test and it will basically help determine if the graphics card is a major improvement. Again, this graphics card I never really would use on anybody's build because it's really, it's usually an expensive card. Um, but again, I did get a great deal on it. But um, yes, uh, as you can see right now, we are in Mortal Kombat 11. And again, it's really just like the booting. Once the game actually boots, I could use the Xbox controller. That's what's great about PC games and Xbox controllers. They just work hand in hand. No need to configure or anything like that. So loading up Mortal Kombat 11 for the first time. I Again, I'm not big on fighting games like this, especially Mortal Kombat. I'm not that great at it. But 4K projector display, settings set to 4K right now. What's really great about this projector is that you can see it. Um, it is like 2 o'clock in the afternoon right now. And I do have skylights here. So I'm just going to beat up on the computer Oof. just gonna button mash this right now okay just getting shot okay <laughs> But yes, there you go, that's Mortal Kombat 11. Again, running off of the hard disk drive. As you saw, like the original boot, the initial boot, I should say, took a while, but now that you're actually in the game, I'm just gonna get my ass kicked right now. Do this fatal blow real quick. Oh, I think I just won. Cool. There you guys have it. Let's unbox the components. All right, guys, so now we're going to basically check out all the components that are inside of the Ultimate Gaming Console. I have a couple of receipts. They're just kind of scattered around. Um, mostly purchased from Amazon, Best Buy, and Micro Center on this. I'll know that I hit it big when I get sponsored. So first thing we'll start off with is the Micro Center stuff. Micro Center had an amazing deal for Black Friday. The first thing was the i7. Um, I originally wanted an i5. Uh, i5 I think was was around $175. Um, their sale, an i7, 9700K, was the same price as an i5. So I got the i7 for literally about 175 bucks. So that's number one on the Black Friday sale. That is running an i7 overclockable. So i7 on that build. Um, you could also pair it with a motherboard. You get a discount. 
This is the same exact motherboard that I get for Robbie's build, Union's build, all the PC builds that I do. It is the MSI MPG Z390 Gaming Edge. So this again has the Wi-Fi built into it. The motherboard came out to $139, but they also do the promo where if you pair it with a processor, they give you like another 25 bucks off. So the motherboard came out to about 115 bucks. Um, the other big sale was the Samsung. Samsung 970 Evo SSD one terabyte for 129 bucks. So that was a big deal. And while I was at Micro Center, I did get the G Skill um, Ripshaw. These, this is the DDR4 3600 because the motherboard can support that. So basically out of Micro Center, I bought one, two, three, four things out of Micro Center. So that was Micro Center. The real big thing I do want to talk about is Best Buy. Best Buy, um, I got the controllers and the biggest thing from Best Buy was this. It is the 14 terabyte Western Digital Easy Store. I have three of these. I purchased three of these. Um, really cool fact, I'm in Astoria, Queens. So um, the guy went, he's like, hey, this Best Buy is actually a warehouse. Went in the back, he got three of them. They only had three in stock. Um, he was in the back for like 10 minutes. He like disappeared. Came back, he started ringing it up and he's like, whoa, this actually I'm only supposed to sell one per customer. Um, but he's like, you know what? Screw it, this pandemonium here. It was, it was crazy busy. He's like, I'm just gonna scan it. So I have three 14 terabyte Easy Store Western Digital's external hard drives. If you take a look at like, like the price of like, well real quick, I'll tell you the price. The 14, the 14 terabyte hard drive from Best Buy, $189. Again, Black Friday sale. I think regular retail, these are like 250, which is still a pretty good deal, but I got them for 189 bucks. Um, biggest thing though is that, yes, it is an external hard drive. So it literally looks like this. And basically what I did is that I shucked them. It's called shucking like a clam. You basically take a couple of screwdrivers, you pop it out. Keep in mind that you do avoid the warranty on it. And basically there's a couple of things that are connected to it. For example, there's like the connector that goes into like the actual hard drive to give power and the USB. You take that off and basically you have a 14 terabyte hard drive. If you take a look at like Robbie's build, Robbie got like the 16 terabyte hard drive from a company, not like custom made, it's a unique company. Made 16 terabytes, I don't know the exact price, I don't really remember 16 terabytes, but even like a regular 12 terabyte hard disk drive I mean, they're in like the three hundred and like fifty to four hundred dollar range. Don't quote me on it; I might be wrong, but it is up there for fourteen terabytes, one hundred eighty nine dollars. It's insane. But this is the biggest but, big but. Do your research. This hard drive spins again. It's a regular hard drive, so it's an HDD. This hard drive spins at fifty four hundred or fifty two hundred RPM. Whereas if you did the 10 terabyte, it spins at 7,200 RPM. So it's much faster, um, you know, if you did the 10 terabyte. So keep in mind, this drive is spinning, it's either 5,400 or 56, I think it's 54. Um, it spins less, but again, it's 14 terabytes. That was the big thing I was explaining before in this video is yes, I, I got a 14 terabyte drive for 190 bucks, but we are sacrificing speeds. I'm gonna have to go in depth and do more on that video, but so far it's not drastic. It's not much of a killer. Just keep that in mind though, 14 terabytes for 189 bucks, unreal. The other big thing from Best Buy was the Xbox controllers. This is like the newer style. Again, the Xbox controller actually has a third button on it. Um, I don't know what the deal is with this. They had it either in white or black. Amazon had it too. Um, I actually bought two from Amazon and two from Best Buy because same thing with Best Buy, well really Amazon, you can only get one per customer. So I believe on Amazon I spent 33 bucks and on Best Buy I think it was price match, it was $33. So $33 per controller, that's, that's an amazing deal. Again, Black Friday deal on that. Uh, last thing on Amazon, I don't remember how much I paid, I think I paid like 70 bucks. Uh, it was 750 watt. RGB power supply. Um, this power supply though is non-modular. That means that there's a shitload of wires coming out of this. Whereas Eugene's build and Robbie's build was modular. I could basically only put the wires that I needed. This one was non-modular. I'm actually gonna get the real price because I don't want to just bullshit it. 
$89. $89 for this RGB 750 watts. That was a big deal. Let me go back real quick just to make sure on the Xbox controllers. Yep, Xbox One carbon black. Let me view my receipt. Yes, $35, $35. And I did get the Microsoft Xbox One dongle, $35. So 35, 35, Best Buy was the same deal, 35, 35, and the Xbox One dongle, 35. So again, big savings on all that. The last, last, last and final thing, again, with the time of this video, it is right now January 1st, 2021. Graphics cards are just, I don't know what the hell is happening with graphic cards right now. Somebody said that, I mean, graphic cards right now, if you go to Micro Center, there's none, there's zero out there. Got this used on offer up. It is an RTX 2060 Super. I paid 300 bucks. Insane deal. My regular RTX 2060 for the pinball machine was 300 bucks. So for the same price, yes, granted it was used. The person said it was used for like three months, whatever. I did need a graphics card because I did want to game on it. But after all the testing, it's pretty good. I usually don't use Zotec. Again, I'm a very big MSI freak. My pinball cabinet does have an MSI 2060 in it. So far, no complaints. Again, an RTX 2060 Super for 300 bucks. It was a no brainer. But again, current GPU pricing and all that, it's actually putting a standstill on ultimate gaming console builds and PC builds because people want it, but they are not willing to pay the premium for graphics cards. I'm doing a lot of research on graphics cards. The 3000 series is starting at like 400 bucks. I have a customer that found one like a 3060 Ti. It was like 420 bucks and I was like, yo, when I was building my virtual pinball cabinet, I thought 300 bucks for like the 2060 was a lot. I mean, now they're at like the 400 range and then again, if you want offer up, I could probably sell this 2060 for like 400 bucks now. But again, I do need it for the build. So there you guys have it that is all the pieces the biggest thing though that saved money was this this 14 terabyte deal is just insane um best buy usually does like every other month they do a sale but the 14 terabytes was the first time i've ever seen it on sale again though i will be doing a lot of testing with this hard drive because again the speeds on this are much lower than i'm usually accustomed to but so far, I mean, again, just now you saw me playing Tony Hawk, that's running on this 14 terabyte build. Mortal Kombat 11 boot was on this 14 terabyte hard drive. So, a lot of stuff to keep in mind, but there you guys have it, the ultimate gaming console on a budget. But there you guys have it, the ultimate gaming console. Again, it's very difficult for me to call it the budget beast build or whatever, budget build, because again, I did get a lot of stuff on Black Friday sale. Regular pricing though, you gotta figure add maybe about 40 bucks on each piece, except for like the controllers. I think the controller sale was like 15 bucks. So again, pretty big deal, pretty big savings. VigVP, Game Case Arcades. Whew.